enshrined forever in the archives of America's history will be those great men who have guided our country to her destiny as leader of the world's free nations. Here then are our presidents. George Washington, first in war, first in peace. His grateful countrymen called him to be their first president. John Adams, first president to live in the White House. Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence. James Madison, Jefferson's Secretary of State, twice elected to the presidency. James Monroe, fifth president, he formulated the Monroe Doctrine. John Quincy Adams, scholar, statesman, son of President John Adams. Andrew Jackson, colorful old hickory, the people's president. Martin Van Buren, first president born an American citizen. William Henry Harrison, the gallant old Indian fighter who died a month after his inauguration. John Tyler, first vice president to succeed to the presidency. James K. Polk, his administration saw Texas admitted to the Union. Zachary Taylor, old rough and ready, found the slavery issue splitting the nation. Millard Fillmore effected a temporary solution by signing the Compromise of 1850. Franklin Pierce, 14th President of the 31 United States. James Buchanan, despite his efforts, the country drifted toward civil war. Abraham Lincoln, he preserved the Union, and his immortal words are still reverently read at the Lincoln Memorial. With malice toward none, with charity for all, let us bind up the nation's wounds. A gentle father, a forgiving victor, a humble leader. Andrew Johnson, to him fell the momentous problems of reconstruction. Ulysses S. Grant, a brilliant general, for eight years he led America at peace. Rutherford B. Hayes, 19th president of a nation now grown to 39 states. James Garfield, victim of an assassin's bullet four months after taking office. Chester Arthur, a champion of civil service reform in government. Grover Cleveland, only president to serve two non-consecutive terms in the White House. Benjamin Harrison, grandson of the ninth president, William Henry Harrison. William McKinley, 24th president, was assassinated while visiting the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo in 1901. And now for the first time, a new invention, the motion picture camera, records the inauguration of a president. McKinley rides to the Capitol on a blustery March day. A year later, he was to guide America in the war with Spain. Theodore Roosevelt returned from the Spanish-American War a national idol, and when McKinley was assassinated, he became our youngest president. These were busy, exciting years for America, now becoming a world power. The Panama Canal was started, pure food legislation passed, conservation furthered. The dynamic old rough rider steered the ship of state with a resolute, forceful hand. Long after his seven years as president were over, he remained in the public spotlight a respected and beloved figure. William Howard Taft, a portly, jovial personality with an infectious chuckle, was the successor Theodore Roosevelt picked to carry on the policies started by him. Taft was the only president to later serve as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. But while America continued to prosper during his administration, war clouds were blowing across the face of Europe. Woodrow Wilson became president in 1913. War erupted in Europe a year later. America entered in 1917. When the war was won, Wilson sailed for France to receive there a heartfelt welcome. At the peace conference, he worked tirelessly to weld the covenant of the League of Nations into the Versailles Treaty. The president returned to America and knew acclaim from his own people. Still more honors were heaped upon him. For his labors for peace, he was awarded the Nobel Prize. 
but his endeavors had taken a severe toll. Although in health, the president continued to toil with his remaining energies for lasting world peace. Warren G. Harding embarked the country on the job of returning to a peacetime footing. His easygoing cordiality was exemplified by his campaign, conducted mainly from the front porch of his home in Marion, Ohio. In 1923, the nation mourned his passing. Calvin Cooley, a man of simple manners and few words, conscientious and scrupulously honest, succeeded to the presidency. The first family shunned the spotlight. With the shrewd conservatism instilled by his New England parents, Coolidge carefully guided the United States with his wife by his side through an era of prosperity and rare good feeling. Herbert Hoover had won wide respect for his relief work in Europe after World War I. His were an eventful four years in the White House. There was a worldwide depression. Japan sent troops into Manchuria. Adolf Hitler began his rise to power in Germany. The seeds were being sown for World War II. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, energetic, progressive, had been Wilson's assistant secretary of Navy and vice presidential candidate before infantile paralysis threatened his brilliant career. But he overcame the crippling illness, was elected governor of New York, nominated for the presidency, and elected overwhelmingly. America was fighting for her life in World War II when Roosevelt, elected for an unprecedented third term, visited American troops in North Africa. The pendulum of victory already was swinging to the Allies, but the president was not to see Germany and Japan surrender. Three months after beginning a fourth term, death claimed America's commander-in-chief. Harry S. Truman took the presidential oath in the green-walled cabinet room of the White House from Chief Justice Harlan F. Stone of the Supreme Court. Reverently, he asked friends, give me your prayers. Truman's career was the realization of the great American dream, the country boy who became president. His friendly manner made Americans feel he was plain folks. Dwight D. Eisenhower, sincere and vigorous, a man in any cloth, soldier, educator, or statesman, architect of victory in Europe. In World War II, he swept the forces of Hitler to total defeat. He returned home, and his own people took him to their hearts. In New York, he waved happily as a storm of confetti and ticker tape swirled down around him. He was a man of the hour. A leader in civilian life, as president of Columbia, Ike championed the cause of freedom. Then NATO called him, and in one short year, he made allies out of old enemies and helped unify Western Europe. Home again, General Eisenhower engaged in the biggest battle of his career, the battle for the White House, and won an emphatic victory. Dwight David Eisenhower, 33rd president, another chapter, may it be a bright one, in the glorious and continuing story of America's presidents.